right, here we are. Canadian junkyard. Okay, pro tip here. Morning folks, welcome back to the show. Latest episode of Fixing Random Crap with Craig. Uh, today we're not really fixing anything in particular, but we're going to uh, do a video to walk through a brew day. Um, a lot of friends that are uh, interested in how this process works. And uh, we're going to walk you through, so take you along for the ride today. And uh, here we go, we've got our, this is the Grainfather. This is the uh, particular piece of brewing equipment that I use. And uh, it's a great piece of kit because it allows us to do a bunch of stuff in one step, in one uh, unit, and uh, it's pretty compact. So we've got our water already in here. Um, you can see that it is full up, and we are at 128 degrees Fahrenheit. Not sure how well you can see that. Um, and what we're going to do here is we're going to put in the mash basket. So this is where we're going to add our grains. Um, this is going to be an all grain brew, so we're going to start right from right from our grains, right from our uh, malted barley, and uh, yeah, let's show you how we uh, measure out our grains. We got our big bag of uh, Canadian malt here. Um, I've already measured out. This is this is a big bag of two row, so it's one of the main types of barley that goes into a lot of beer. Uh, there's also Pilsner. There's a big bag of Pilsner malt there. But this this beer we're doing a uh, an APA today, American Pale Ale, and that uh, calls for two row. Um, I guess it's more of a Canadian Pale Ale since we're using Canadian grain. So I've already measured out um, my 5125 grams grams of uh, of grains that's what kind of what they look like you can eat them they're delicious they taste a little bit like uh, like cereal mostly um, and then these are all of the specialty grains that are going to go into this batch so we're going to use a bit of Vienna some uh, melanoidin some Munich malt some there's the Munich some wheat malt uh, we're going to put a little carafoam in there and uh, yeah, see how it goes. I'll let you uh, tag along as we measure all this stuff out. Okay, all of our grains are in here. We've got our, um, as per our recipe, I well you can see that. We've got our uh, two row, our wheat. Munich, Melodonin, Vienna, and Carafoam. So we're going to uh, just give it a nice little mix here. And you'll see that these are um, all still inside their hard shell, so we're going to run them through a grain mill and bust them up so that we can extract all the goodness out of these guys. A couple more things we're going to do here. Um, we need to get our uh, make a few additions to our water. Um, so first we have a pH stabilizer called 5.2 because that's the range that uh, you want to be in apparently I don't actually know a whole lot about water chemistry it's just sort of what's recommended um, a little bit of gypsum to uh, I believe that that is to add a little bit of a hardness to the water because um, the water is a little bit softer um, here where I'm brewing you can check out the, like the city water report and get an idea of how much you need to use that but I use a half a teaspoon and uh, these are little Camden tablets that are uh, help promote clarity. And uh, you just put them in a little cup and grind them up. So I've added all the stuff into this cup here that we're going to add in. And we're just going to stir that right into our mash water. Give it a good stir. And you can see we're almost up to temperature already. Our recipe calls for um, a mash at 152 Fahrenheit for an hour. Um, and this recipe is out of this book, Brewing Classic Styles. It is a uh, real good book that I recommend for anybody getting into this. Um, I've made a few little tweaks to it, but that's where the recipe is based from. 
this overflow pipe here. And then this is the hop stopper, which uh, keeps our grains from falling down that hole while we're pouring them in, and you'll understand that in a second. So next we're going to mill our grains. Okay, we have a hood fan set up down here. Uh, it makes our lives a little bit easier when we're boiling. We want to be able to get the, uh, you know, that vapor out of the house. Don't need the place smelling like a brewery. Um, and I like to also mill under that, so I'm going to flip that on now. And uh, we'll fast forward this footage, but you can see how the, uh, how the milling works. does work on a hand crank. Um, some people like to do it that way. Those people are suckers. It also works on a drill. So we've got our grains all uh, milled up, and you can see they look quite a bit different now from what they did originally. So there's our unmilled grains, there's our milled grains. We want to mill them up so we can get all of the uh, sugars out of them, because that's what's going to get uh, turned into our beer. So we're going to start mashing in now, I'll show you how that works. Okay, ready to mash in, our water's ready to go, we're at the temperature we want to be at, and uh, essentially we're just going to take this grain and pour it in real slow. A little bit at a time, and we're going to give it a nice mix up every time. It starts to smell delicious already. And when we mix it all in, we just want to avoid having any clumps, or sometimes referred to as dough balls. When this stuff hits the water, it can tend to clump up, so we use our mash paddle to uh, break that stuff up, make sure that we're stirring at the bottom and the top. Okay, so it's about right when you have the consistency of sort of an oatmeal. Essentially here we're making tea. You know, we're just steeping all these grains in this water to extract all the sugars and goodness from them um, that will become our beer. So I like to uh, just kind of do this sort of thing to make sure I haven't missed any of those dough balls in there. That's looking pretty good. That's a really good consistency. The grain father uh, has a formula that comes with it that I've just loaded into my spreadsheet that allows me to uh, just tell it how many grains, how many pounds of grains that I have, and uh, that automatically calculates uh, how much water to put in. So we'll take out our grain stopper. So now when I press the pump button, the liquid starts flowing around. I don't know how well you can see that. Maybe we'll lift this cover up a little bit so you get a better idea. So you can see sort of down in there, the pump is moving the water from the bottom of the grandfather up to the top, out through this out through this recirculation hose and uh, that allows the water to constantly be circulating through the grain bed so we'll get the most uh, we'll get the most potent tea and uh, it will also keep track of our temperature so it grows up a tiny bit here but that will regulate it's already going back down to get back to that 152 that we want so we're going to take this uh, unit back it up under here 
air should be captured and head just straight outside. Back down to 154 again there. And uh, we're going to let that mash for an hour. Next up we'll get our sparge water ready. So the next thing we need to do is prepare what's called our sparge water. So essentially once we uh, once that mash process finishes, we're going to pull those grains up above the boil kettle. The water's going to drain out into the kettle, start boiling. Um, but in the meantime, we're going to rinse those grains to get the last little bits off of them. So I just use a couple of these, uh, I got a couple of these coffee urns that work pretty good to get the water to the temperature that I need. Conveniently, coffee temperature seems to be exactly what I want to sparge with. So. Um, I've measured out the amount of sparge water that we need. I'll plug this one in and uh, I'll measure out the other one. So we have ten and a half liters of uh, sparge water. Okay, so while we're waiting for our mash to finish, uh, we're going to get our hops ready and other additions for the boil. So we have a couple different types of hops here. Uh, the recipe calls for a, uh, a bittering hop at the start. We're actually going to be using uh, hops that we collected from uh, one of my neighbor's yards that had them growing wild in the in the backyard. This is a uh, like a whole leaf hop, so you can see that it's kind of falling apart a little bit because it's dried out really well. But there's this yellow um, powder in there. It's called lipulin, and that's what gives the uh, the bitterness, the alpha acids, um, into the beer, as far as I'm aware. So um, we're going to take that and we're going to measure out what we need for that stuff, and uh, that's how they look when they come off the vine but often commercial hops get pelletized and they look like that. I wish you guys could smell these, they smell awesome. Um, so we're gonna have uh, a mystery hop. We don't actually know what hop this is because the person didn't plant it, there's just hops growing in their yard. Uh, so we're gonna try that out. But then for our late edition hops, um, so these ones get, these, these early hops add to the bitterness if you add them early on in the boil. Um, and then the ones you add later um, give it more of the aroma and flavor not so much the bitterness. So we're going to use Citra, Cascade, Amarillo, and Mosaic for that. So uh, I'm just going to measure them out. Okay, there we go. So we've got our uh, 24 ounces of whole leaf mystery hops. They're going to go in uh, as soon as we, normally we would wait right to start boiling, but we're going to try a new technique um, known as first wart hopping. I've never done that before. Uh, we're essentially just put them in even before they start to boil, pretty much as soon as you're done your sparge. Um, and then we've got our 32 grams of uh, half Cascade, half Amarillo, and then uh, 32 grams of half Mosaic, half um, Citra. So those will be the hops that we're going to put in. There's a couple other additions that we're going to do. Um, there is a yeast nutrient that we're going to add, as well as something called Irish moss, which is a uh, like a fining that that uh, cre helps create clarity in the beer. We add the yeast nutrient just so the yeast has a little bit of something to eat. Helps it get started out when it gets into the beer. We also made a yeast starter, which I'll get into a little bit later. Yeast nutrient is going to be half a teaspoon. So all our additions are ready to go. And I see that the time is exactly 11.25. So we're going to start our mash out process. That very simply. Actually, let me pull this up and show you guys. So you can see that the liquid, the color has changed significantly in here. So that is all those those grains have changed the color of this to much darker than it was at the start. So it's taking some of that color from the grains. So now we're going to up our temperature to 170 just for 10 minutes and that'll that's our mash out process and then we're going to lift the grain basket 
up and we're going to uh, sparge. Okay, we are all ready to do our sparge. We've done our mash out. We did a one hour mash. We did a 10 minute mash out. And uh, I'm going to show you how we just lift up this kit. See the beer is draining. The, this is called wort at this phase. It's not beer yet because we haven't pitched the yeast. The yeast hasn't done its work, but this is sinking down through the grain bed. And it's dripping down into here. So this bottom part becomes the boiler, and uh, then the grains will be captured up here. We can just take those right off and move on with the brew day. So I'm going to set this to boil and uh, we're going to start our sparging process which I will show you in a second. Okay, as we start our sparge, we're just going to push this down first till it meets the grain bed because the grains tend to get a little bit compressed as they go down. And you see it still has a little bit of a ways to go there so we'll let that drain out a little bit more and come right back. Okay, you can see that the uh, wort has drained down towards the grain bed. I've pushed this all the way down on top of the grain bed, not to compress it, but just to have it right on top of the grain bed. So we're ready to start sparging. To finish, this will probably take 15, 20, 25 minutes and uh, to get both this urn and the other, uh, get the whole 10 and a half liters in. And uh, then we'll be ready to add our hops, add our first word hops. More to come. Okay, our sparge is done. Uh, there's still, of course, liquid in here that's gonna continue to drain down and drip into the boiler. You can see that it's still, you be able to see that it's still dripping down there. Uh, but we wanna add our first word hops. So, we're gonna take this, uh, off and pour in our hops. Okay, you'll see we're at 211 degrees, one short of boiling. So with that, we are going to remove the grain basket. Get that out of the way. You can see here that we are about to be boiling. Well, it's a little bit hard to see with all that uh, those leaf hops in there, but it's starting to boil. So we'll call this the uh, boil start time. I'll just record it. Normally, we'd be putting hops on at this point, the the, the 60 minute boil hops. Um, but because we did the first wort hops, the hops are already in there. Uh, we will have hops to put in at uh, five minutes and at zero minutes. We're going to try doing a hop stand today for the first time as well, and. Uh, yeah, we'll keep you informed along the way. There we go. Now we're really starting to boil here. In business. Official time right now, 12.32 p.m. So we'll be back here in uh, 50 minutes to put in our yeast nutrient and our um, Irish moss. Okay, folks, we're back. Um, the boil is just ended. I have turned off the boiler because we're at our one hour mark. I did add the, uh, the yeast nutrient and the Irish moss at 10 minutes. I added some hops at five minutes. Um, we're gonna add the 
zero minute hops right now, so I'm going to give this a bit of a stir. And we're going to sprinkle those guys in. Stand by. There we go. Get them all out. Excellent. Give these a stir again. Perfect. So, what's happening now, you'll see this contraption to the left. This is a counter flow chiller that comes with the uh, grain father. So what's happening is it's pumping the wort up through this chiller and uh, comes out back in here and just circulates back in. So what we have down here are some tubes that aren't connected right yet, but they will be soon. So that is to uh, connect cold water into that into that piping so the beer is in an interior line in there and then and this exterior line we pump cold water through and then the hot water that water becomes very hot and takes the heat out of the that's how it cools it right and uh, that'll come out that red tube so we'll save that water for cleaning for later uh, but what we're going to do now is uh, what's called a hop stand so we're going to let these hops that we just put in just linger in the beer for about 40 45 minutes um, and i'm going to try to jimmy up something to create a bit of a whirlpool with this. You can see there's the beer coming through. I'm going to see if I can get that to stay close on the side to create a bit of a whirlpool because that's what a lot of the commercial brewers do. Um, and that would help keep those hops moving around the wort and then also get everything down at the bottom to uh, line up in a nice little pile and stay away from the filter um, where, the, where the pump gets the beer out. So uh, more to come. Okay, so we have a few things happening here. Um, we are circulating, we've just begin, began cooling the wort, so you can see that it is uh, just recirculating back into the, back into the kettle. Um, we've hooked up our cold water line, so you see that the line is hooked up. We're sending water through the blue cable. It goes into the coil, counter flows against the, against the wart, and uh, cools it down. And then the hot water, the super hot water, comes out of the red tube and is just filling that bucket there. We'll use that for cleaning later. So what we're doing is just watching to see when this is going to be cool enough. And that's feeling pretty good there now. You want that to feel like sort of room temperature. So with that, we also have our carboy ready to go, cleaned, sanitized. There's still a little bit of little bit of bubbles in there from the sanitizer. That's totally fine. The funnel is sanitized. We're ready to go. So what we're gonna do now is uh, start filling it up. Turn the pump off just for a quick second. So don't get beer everywhere. Back now you want to try and I like to try and have that uh, splash as much as I can because I want to get as much oxygen into the beer as possible at this point. So lots of splashing is good, and we'll uh, give that some time to start filling up, and we're going to pitch our yeast at the same time. I mentioned yeast. Um, this is a yeast starter that I've created, so essentially what you do, and I did this just last night, is you create like a miniature beer. Um, it's all under sanitary conditions, but it would be like super flavorless, there'd be nothing to this. But the whole point of it is to put your yeast into this, and let it start getting to work on eating up the uh, the sugar in this beer. So this yeast, instead of just throwing brand new yeast into the beer, um, this yeast will be, you know, already exercising and getting fired up and they start to multiply. You see lots of bubbles and stuff happening here. So that's the yeast working, uh, changing that, uh, converting that sugar into alcohol and CO2. So what I'll, I'm going to do is I'm just going to pour this in when uh, we get a little bit more beer in our carboy and uh, start mixing it up. Let that yeast get to work.
Okay, we're full up about a third of the way. So uh, I'm really happy with the temperature of this. This feels totally like room temperature. A good, good temperature for me to be pitching the yeast into. Um, so I'm just gonna take, give this one more little shake here. Mixed up real good. And you wanna, I like to try and integrate this into the into the uh, wort as best I can. So I'm just gonna pour it in slow. Good. So we're just going to let this uh, fill up the rest of the way and uh, then we'll set it up for fermentation. One of the first things we want to do to prepare for fermentation is really just get as much oxygen into this as we can. So we did that partially by uh, letting it splash in but we also want to give this a real good shake for about a minute or two. So I'll keep going, and we'll spare you guys the uh, spare you guys the time. One step I neglected to do, and just remembered, is I want to take a reading of the specific gravity of the wart at this point, and this will be our original gravity measurement, uh, and it'll help us calculate at the end what the alcohol percentage is. So I'm just, I have a uh, totally cleaned and sterilized uh, turkey baster here and that should be plenty and I'll show you how to take the measurement okay so here's our sample um, we are going to take this hydrometer and drop it in 64 is our reading, which is pretty good. The recipe actually called for 56. Last time we brewed this recipe, we got 61, so our efficiency is a little bit uh, higher again, and uh, we can let the yeast go to work. You can also take a sip at this point, and uh, it's obviously going to be pretty sweet, but um, you get a little idea of some of the hop flavor that's going to be there. Tastes not too bad. Look forward to when it's beer. Okay, so everything is set up here for fermentation. We've got uh, our airlock in place. So as the uh, as the yeast starts to really kick into gear over here, uh, it's going through eating those sugars, turning it into alcohol and CO2. So you want you don't want air getting in. So the CO2 will bubble up through here and out into this pitcher of sanitized water, so that we know air is getting in. And uh, yeah, we'll take another look tomorrow when when uh, the yeast will be well on its way. I will show you this though. This is my fermentation chamber that has a little temperature controller set up on it. So when beers need to be fermented at specific temperatures, which a lot of beers do, like lagers need to be fermented at a really cool temperature around 10 degrees. This here is a Hefeweizen that is uh, being fermented right now and uh, it needed to be done at 17 degrees so after a while you can just put this little airlock on top and that keeps the uh, that keeps you just put a little water in there so the air can get out um, and that one's almost done but uh, this this ale yeast that we're using for uh, for this beer for our APA it's a uh, White Labs liquid yeast um, WLP001 and it's quite happy fermenting at, uh, at room temperature, so we'll let this one just hang out here. Which is good, because there's only room for one in the fermentation chamber. So we'll see what it looks like tomorrow. Alright, this is uh, the next morning. It is about 11 a.m. We pitched our yeast uh, yesterday afternoon, 3-4 o'clock, I guess. Um, so, hasn't been a full day yet. And uh, you can see the yeast is working its magic quite nicely. 
flying around there. Eating up all that sugar. Nom, 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 nom. And uh, we're getting lots of, uh, lots of bubbles. That CO2 is working its way out. So uh, this will be beer in about, uh, in about a week. And uh, maybe we'll do another video to uh, let you know how it tasted. Anyway, that's, uh, that's a brew day on, uh, with the grandfather on fixing random crap with Craig. Tune in again next time. Take it easy.